Okay, we are back on the HX1 ton of build and going to get stuck into the tray. Well, kind of, there's a couple of little issues I need to get rectified before I can continue on building the tray. So I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it has been a long time coming. I know I've talked about, I'm gonna start building the tray uh, soon, but uh, it just hasn't really worked out like that. I've had plenty to do in between, but yeah, now I'm at the point of, yeah, I need to start building this tray. So I just wanted to talk a bit about the planning uh, and design and stuff of this tray. Now starting out with the mud guards, these ones are from mrmudguard.com.au. So these are part number DR1228s. So DR is double radius, so it's got the radius on both sides of it, the curved edges. And then the 12 is 12 inches uh, wide and the 28 I think is the diameter of 28 inches I believe. So yeah, I ended up getting the DR1226s, but they were too tight around the tire, so I had to go to the next size up, and I think that is a really nice fit, hugs the tire nicely. Now, with the tray, I'm gonna have these guards sticking up above the tray. It's been done plenty of times before, uh, and it just then allows me to have the tray sit really low. Um, so I'm gonna have it uh, sit as low as I can get it to the chassis. I just think that looks uh, really cool with the low tray. So I've got all my steel delivered over here. Now this is from Harding Steel here in Brisbane. They're in the north side, just pay an extra fee to get it delivered. But the size that I've got here, this is gonna be used for the outside frame of the tray. So this is 65 by 35 mil. So I think that's gonna be a good size. It's not too bulky. I think that's yeah, gonna be nice. The sort of inside skeleton sort of structure is going to be out of 35 by 35 or I could possibly use some 25 by 25 I'm not really too sure yet so I just thought I'd get some 25 by 25 as well now all this steel is two mil wall thickness so I went two mil just trying to keep the weight down as best as I can with this tray because I'm not using this to cart things or carry things on it doesn't really have to be that strong it's just for show this tray but if you were gonna build a tray and you were going to carry things on it, I'd probably consult an engineer before you pick all your materials. At very least, I'd probably use a 2.5 mil wall thickness. It's just going to be a bit stronger. But yeah, the thicker the wall obviously is going to add more weight to it. But yeah, for my application, I think two mil is going to be fine. As far as the overall look and design of the tray, I've been sort of sitting back, trying to have a bit of a think of ways I could make this tray a little bit different. But with the tunners, the tray is what makes or breaks them. So I don't want to get too crazy or too wild with the tray and completely stuff it up. I've seen some really nice tunners and I've tried to do trays different or yeah, some wild looking trays out there and it just looks like shit. So, you know, hats off to people that are, you know, trying to do things different, but I think it gets to a point where, yeah, you can try and be different. It just, you know, just for the sake of being different, it just doesn't look right. So. I think what I'm going to do is just keep it relatively simple. There's no point trying to overcomplicate it. So what I'm going to do is just, yeah, the, the proven sort of, you know, flat tray, guard sticking up above the tray with a nice headboard. I was thinking maybe of doing the headboard so it stays with the chassis and then I'm going to have like a tilt tray as well. So then when you tilt the tray, the headboard stays there. But I was sort of looking at that and trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. But I just think there's going to be too much stuffing around to do that for not really much gain at all like you're not really going to benefit from doing that it's yeah it's going to be a little bit different but it's just too much stuffing around so as far as the top of the tray you know you can put wood in there i think wood would look pretty good if it was the same color as the interior but um what i'm going to do is put some uh flat sheet over the top so i'll probably use like a alloy and aluminium probably like either a two mil or 2.5 mil thick and then i'll glue it in and then just smooth off the edges, make it all nice and flat, and then I'll paint the whole tray the same color as the, the car in the yellow vortex. Um, I was also thinking I might be able to put some bead rolls in the um, aluminium. So if I use two mil, I'm, I think you should be able to put bead rolls in that. I'm not really too sure, I have to do some research on that first, but I was just thinking maybe just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting, maybe some bead, ro bead rolls in there would be kind of cool as well. So yeah, that's um, what I'm gonna do with the tray. 
So yeah, just keep it relatively simple. And I think it's all about proportions as well. I don't want to make it too long. I'll try and keep it, yeah, just maybe like 50 mil past this uh, rear cross member. And I'll probably bring in the sides a little bit uh, just so the guards stick out a bit. Um, but yeah, I think just keep all the proportions right. Keep it nice and simple. Nice, you know, smooth, flat tray is gonna look, uh, gonna look good. Now with the tilt tray, it's gonna pivot at the back here. And I've been trying to do a bit of uh, CAD prototype in here. So a bit of cardboard assisted design. So I've just got these bits of cardboard that I made up. So that's 35 mil. So that's gonna be the 35 mil piece that'll go right down along the chassis. And then that's gonna be the, um, the outside sort of frame. So it's a little bit hard to hold this um, camera and stuff at the same time. But anyway, so the mount's gonna sit like that and then it's gonna yeah, pivot like that. So I sort of just made this so I could just see exactly sort of how far I can have this stick out before it hits the uh, rear cross member here. So yeah, that's what I'm sort of gonna do there. And I'm actually getting some bushes made up. So the bushes will go into this 35 mil um, uh, square section and there's going to be some bearings that will knock in there and they're going to be roller bearings so it's just going to be a lot nicer action of it tilting with the roller bearings in there rather than just yeah, drilling a hole and putting a bolt in there it's just going to be a lot nicer just with some roller bearings so I'm sort of waiting for them to get uh, machined up at the moment so I'm sort of at a bit of a standstill with them. So one thing that I've done before I start building this tray is I've just gone along the chassis on both sides and just measured it relative to the ground. So you don't want to sort of have it kicking sideways or one side up higher than the other. It's just going to put your tray out of whack when it, when it comes time to build it. So you want the chassis to sit nice and level. So I've just gone along the whole tray, measured at the front, sort of in the middle at the uh, diff and then at the back. And then I've just adjusted the coilovers to get it all nice and level on the front and the back. And also you wanna get your ride height to where you want it to be. So I'm pretty happy with the stance of this. I think that's sitting nice uh, and low. If anything, it probably could go up slightly at the front. It's sort of dipping down only just at the front there, but I'll wait till I get this tray built and then get the bonnet on. It may kind of level out, but yeah, if anything, I can just adjust the coilovers up slightly at the front, not a big deal. Now the problem that I'm having that I mentioned earlier, which is a bit of a prick, but because I've measured all this chassis, I measured this rear bar here, and this side is sitting at about 580, and then I measured this side here, and this is sitting at um, 570, so it's like 10 mil off, so it sits 10 mil higher up this side here on the right hand side, so you can kind of see that which is, yeah, I never noticed that before, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. So what I done was, yeah, because I measured all the chassis, it's all bang on even from about here um, to the front of the car. Like it's all bang on even on both sides up to, yeah, about here. So what's happening is I think this chassis is uh, kicking up, upwards. So if you put the um, straight edge along there, so that's sitting at 1.9 on this uh, level box and then you put it on the other side here and then that is sitting at about 1.2. So yeah, it looks like it's kicking up on this side and then yeah, it's lifting that um, rear cross member up and it's on the piss. So I can't really leave it like that because, because I'm gonna mount the tray and the pivot to this rear bar, it's just gonna put the tray out. So what I'm thinking, I've got a few options here. I can either build the tray and just drop the mount down on this side 10 mil, but that's just gonna be shit because you, the tray is gonna be nice and level, but this rear cross member is gonna be out and that's just gonna look like shit. Um, and then another option I was thinking is I could probably take it somewhere with a decent press and support it about here and then just sort of press down on here and just bend it. But I think that's going to take a fair bit of weight to try and bend that chassis. And because this cross member and I've got these bars in here, it's all sort of tying it together. So there's probably going to be a little bit of weight needed to, to bend that down and potentially it might, yeah, stress and kind of warp this um this chassis potentially 
And then I guess another option was I was thinking is I could probably cut this rear cross member out. Um, I'll probably have to remove all the drop tank, cut this uh, mount for the drop tank out and then do like a relief cut um, sort of on both sides. So cut all the way down and then sort of just bend it down and then re-weld it. Um, so that's another thing that I was thinking now. I know you're not meant to really cut into chassis and re-weld it, but because it's like from about here backwards, it's not level. Yeah, like at least it's not where the diff mount is. So there's not really any sort of major structure from here backwards. It's only just sort of holding that tray on. So yeah, that was another option that I was thinking about doing. But if anyone has any kind of ideas on what I should do there, then leave a comment in the comment section. I sort of really need to get that sorted before I start building this tray. But then another thing was, yeah, maybe this is sitting right and that other side's actually kicked down and it's not right on the left-hand side. So I'm not really too sure which side I should try and, yeah, get even. So, yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on that. So, yeah, that's a little bit annoying about that chassis. I suspect what's probably going on there is because I removed that rear cross member, and then there's that cross member where your diff goes because I put that full link. But I reckon what's happened is when I've cut them cross members out, there might have been a little bit of stress in that chassis and it's just kind of lifted up on that right hand side when I've cut them out. And I'm a little bit pissed off at myself because I probably should have checked all that and measured it all before I welded it all back in. Yeah, I guess that's car building for you. You, you learn from your mistakes. So yeah, it's a bit of a setback, but it's all fixable, I guess. I'm thinking what I am gonna do is pull that rear cross member back out um, and then do like a relief cut. I'm sort of leaning towards that uh, way. That way I can do it in the shed. I kind of rang a few places up, um, some chassis alignment places, and they said that, yeah, they're pretty booked out. They can't guarantee on when they can get it in and to have a look at it or whatever. So I think that's what I'll do. It's only just in that little, yeah, sort of foot and a half of the rear chassis there. So I think I should be able to just fix that myself. And pulling that, um, that rear bar out anyway, it's probably not a bad thing because I was going to actually cut into that because I've got some tail lights here that I've sourced. So these are like some LED tail lights. So they, um, yeah, I think they're gonna be pretty cool. So I was gonna put them into the rear cross member, actually cut um, a section out and then have them mounted inside just so it looks nice and neat. So yeah, that's probably not gonna be a bad um, thing pulling that out to be able to do that anyway. But yeah, a bit of a quicker episode this one. I would like to have got a lot more done than um, well, I pretty much didn't do anything. So yeah, apologies for this sort of episode. There wasn't really a whole lot to happen. So if you like what I do, you wanna help support the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Also, I'll put a link in the show notes for the merch store. So that will help me out a lot with uh, purchasing uh, some merch. So yeah, we'll see you next time and hopefully I'll have all that sorted and we'll actually get stuck into the tray next one. Cheers guys.